Alleluia. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Welcome to Camino Lutheran Church on this third Sunday in the season of Easter. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. We remember the promises of God as we continue our worship with the thanksgiving for baptism. Joined to Christ in the waters of baptism, we are welcomed, restored, and supported as citizens of the new creation. Let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. Holy God, holy and merciful, holy and mighty, you are the river of life. You are the everlasting wellspring. In mercy and might, you have freed us from death and raised us with Jesus, the firstborn of the dead. In the baptismal waters, our old life is washed away, and in them we are born anew. Glory to you for oceans and lakes, for rivers and streams. Honor to you for waters that wash us clean, quench our thirst, and nurture both crops and creatures. Praise to you for the life-giving water of baptism, the outpouring of the Spirit, for the new creation. Wash away our sin and all that separates us from you. Empower our witness to your resurrection. Strengthen our resolve in seeking justice for all. Satisfy the world's need through this living water. Where drought dries the earth, bring refreshment. Where despair prevails, grant hope. Where chaos reigns, give peace. We ask this through Christ, who with you and the Spirit reigns forever. Amen. God, 
Your son makes himself known to all his disciples in the breaking of the bread. Open the eyes of our faith, that we may see him in his redeeming work, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our first reading is taken from Acts chapter 2, verses 14, and then 36 through 41. Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed the crowd. Therefore, let the entire house of Israel know with certainty that God has made him both Lord and Messiah, this Jesus whom you crucified. Now when they heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and to the other apostles, Brothers, what should we do? Peter said to them, Repent and be baptized, every single one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, so that your sins may be forgiven. For your children and for all who are far away, everyone whom the Lord our God calls to him. And he testified with many other arguments and exhorted them, saying, Save yourselves from this corrupt generation. So those who welcomed his message were baptized, and that day about 3,000 persons were added. Word of hope, word of life. Thanks be to God. I love God because he listened to me, listened as I begged for mercy. He listened so intently as I laid out my case before him. Death stared me in the face. Hell was hard on my heels. Up against it, I didn't know which way to turn. Then I called out to God for help. Please, God, I cried out, save my life. I will call upon the name of the Lord. Call upon the name of the Lord. What can I give back to God for the blessings he's poured out on me? I'll lift high the cup of heaven, a toast to God. I'll pray in the name of God. I'll complete what I promised God I'd do, and I'll do it together with his people. When they arrive at the gates of death, God welcomes those who love him. Oh God, here I am your servant, your faithful servant. Set me free for your service. I'm ready to offer the thanksgiving sacrifice and pray in the name of God. I'll complete what I promised God I'd do, and I'll do it in company with his people, in the place of worship, in God's house, in Jerusalem, God's city. Hallelujah. I will call upon the name of the Lord, call upon the name of the Lord. Our second reading comes from the first Peter, chapter 1, verses 17 to 23. If you invoke as father the one who judges all people impartially according to their deeds, live in reverent fear during the time of your exile. You know that you were ransomed from the feudal ways inherited from your ancestors, not with perishable things like silver or gold, but with the precious blood of Christ, like that of a lamb without defect or blemish. He was destined before the foundation of the world, but was revealed at the end of the ages for your sake. Through him, you have come to trust in God, who raised him from the dead and gave him glory, so that your faith and hope are set on God. Now that you have purified your souls by your obedience to the truth, so that you have genuine mutual love, love one, or deep, one another deeply from the heart. You have been born anew, not of perishable, but of imperishable seed, through the living and enduring word of God, word of hope, word of life. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel on this third Sunday in the season of Easter comes from the 24th chapter of Luke. 
beginning with the 13th verse. Now on that same day, when Jesus had appeared to Mary Magdalene, two disciples were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem, and talking with each other about all the things that had happened. While they were talking and discussing, Jesus himself came near and went with them. But their eyes were kept from recognizing him. And he said to them, What are you discussing with each other while you walk along? They stood still, looking sad. Then one of those, whose name was Cleopas, answered him, Are you the only stranger in Jerusalem that does not know the things that have taken place there in the past days? He asked them, What things? They replied, The things about Jesus of Nazareth, who was a prophet and, and mighty in word and deed, before God and before all the people, and how our chief priests and leaders handed him over to be condemned to death and to be crucified. But we had hoped that he was the one who was to redeem Israel. Yes, and besides all this, it is now the third day since these things took place. Moreover, some of the women in our group astounded us. They were at the tomb early this morning, and when they did not find the body there, they came back and told us that they had indeed seen a vision of angels who said, He is alive. Some of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said, but they did not see him. Then he said to them, Oh, how foolish you are! And how slow of heart to believe all that the prophets had declared. Was it not necessary that the Messiah should suffer these things and enter into his glory? Then beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them the things about himself in all the scriptures. As they came near to the village to which they were going, he walked ahead as if he were going on. But they urged him strongly, saying, Stay with us because it is almost evening and the day is now nearly over. So he went in to stay with them. When he was at table with him, with them, he took bread, blessed it, and broke it and gave it to them. Their eyes were opened and they recognized him and he vanished from their sight. They said to each other, were not our hearts burning within us while he was talking to us on the road? While he was opening the scriptures to us, that same hour they got up and they returned to Jerusalem, and they found the eleven and the companions gathered together. They were saying, The Lord has risen indeed, and he has appeared to Simon. Then they told what had happened on the road, and how he had been made known to them in the breaking of the bread. Word of hope, word of life. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Gracious God, bless the words of my mouth, the meditations of my heart. They are pleasing to you and faithful to your gospel. These things I pray in your son Jesus' name. Amen. Well, some of you have heard me share this before, but years ago when I was visiting a friend of mine who's a pastor in North Dakota, we were walking down through the fellowship hall in the basement, and many of you have probably seen in, in churches the picture of our gospel reading, the walk to Emmaus, the very story. And as we walked by the picture of it hanging on the wall, my friend John says, look, Hardy's two miles down the road. <laughs> I stopped and I said, what? And I looked at the picture and started laughing because, yes, Jesus is walking with these two and he's got his hand out. And literally, yes, it looks like he's saying, yes, McDonald's, Hardy's, whatever. It's just a couple miles down the road. And while it, it, it did give me a chuckle, when I take a look at this gospel reading, uh, there's something uh, more than just shoving people off to Hardee's or McDonald's in the picture. There's actually something very intimate and connected um, between Jesus and these disciples that matches what we've seen over the last couple of weeks. You know, what's interesting as well is that as I was preparing for this this week, one of the things I was reading, the person brought up, isn't it interesting how the disciples can't seem to remember what Jesus said about the resurrection? that he would be risen in three days. In fact, on Easter, they just seemed surprised by the whole thing. And yet, the religious leaders who came and said, hey, we remember what, his, his, what Jesus said while he was alive, that this thing about resurrection after three days, we don't want his disciples to come steal the body and say that he's risen when he hasn't. So can we put some guards 
uh, by the tomb. And Pilate says, yep, do what you need to do. Go ahead and, and secure it up. So that's an interesting, interesting thing. Maybe it was their, their, just their grief in the midst of it. They just couldn't think straight. Maybe it shows how even though they were with him day after day, they just had their own thoughts and ideas about how God was spoke, supposed to work in the world, especially as Messiah. Maybe, again, just the, the sorrow, their confusion, their wondering. Maybe it was all those things. They just couldn't make the, the connection. And yet, in the midst of all of that, Jesus shows up. Once again, Jesus uh, appears again in our gospel reading to some, to some people. And so as Jesus comes upon these two walking, heading to the little village of Emmaus, he comes up and he says to them, well, what were the two of you discussing along the way? See, already we see the intimacy of the text. Last week I talked about the intimacy of Jesus meeting Thomas in his doubt, in his questions, in his wondering. And Thomas meeting Jesus in the intimacy of his wounds, that that's the very place where it's vulnerable, where it's risky that God meets us. And so Jesus comes in the midst of their vulnerability and their struggles, and he meets them in an intimate way by doing part of what I said on Easter. I said Easter's about Jesus doing ordinary things in extraordinary ways. And here's an ordinary thing. Jesus comes up and says to them, what were you discussing on the walk when you went along? And the disciples look and say, well, are you the only one in the area that doesn't know what's happened these past few days and in the town of Jerusalem? Everybody's talking about it. And Jesus shows interest. He doesn't just move on. Yep, I know what you're talking about. No, he says, what things? Tell me about it. So he gives them the opportunity to share, to talk, to express what's going on in their life. What has made them sad? As the scripture says, they were very sad. That had the look on their face. He just doesn't jump in to fix everything. He sits and he listens. We already have an example when we talk about evangelism, sharing the good news of one of the most important things we can do for people. And that is to sit and listen to their stories. In fact, you'll hear that in one of the prayers. Help us to listen to those, especially those who are on the margins of society and often don't get heard. So Jesus asked them, tell me about it. What things? And so the disciples, these two disciples, proceed to tell him all the things that had happened and how they hoped that he was the one who would come and redeem Israel, and yet the leaders had him crucified, and now all their hope is gone. And so he looks at him and he says, oh, how foolish are you? And I don't think we take that as, you dummies, you jerks. It's, oh, you foolish generation, how you miss so many things if you would just listen, if you just listen. So he says, oh, you, fool, you foolish generation, you, how foolish you are, how slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have declared. So there it is, it's that slowness of heart to believe for whatever the, the reasons are. And then he proceeds, Jesus proceeds to lay out all the history um, from the prophets all the, way, all the way through. And they're just amazed by everything that he's telling them. What is he doing? He's simply telling them the story that is already theirs, that's part of their ancestry and their history. He's laying it out before them. And so finally they get to a spot and Jesus looks like he's gonna keep going through town and they say, no, no, no. See, he's, he's connected with them. They know they've been listened to. There's something special about this person. This person actually cares. So they say, no, come, come, come sit with us, stay with us. And so Jesus comes in and he stays with them. Here we are, this ordinary event, once again, that can be very intimate around the meal, around the table. That's the place where so much conversation happens. For people who actually still, still do that in this day and age, um, and growing up, uh, whether it's at the restaurants or, or at home, when you sit around the meal, it's that place where we have the conversations. It's also the place where you hear all those Thanksgiving, that crazy uncle, whoever who just says this, that, or the next that gets everybody frustrated. That happens too. Um, but it's that intimate place where things are shared, where the day is shared, where the week is shared, where sorrows, where joys are shared. And here they are in this very intimate, connected place once again. And then Jesus takes bread, blesses it, and breaks it, and gives it to them. And their eyes are opened. They now remember. 
they now recognize exactly who Jesus was. Now it hits, didn't our hearts burn within us while he was talking to us? And they go back to the others and they tell them the story and they learn that, yes, Jesus has been raised. Simon has seen them as well. So here we are. He takes them back. Remember, takes them back to the breaking of the bread. Takes them back to that last supper, to that place in which he sat with those original 12 disciples. And he said to them, this is my body given for you. This is my blood poured out. One of you is going to betray me. All of you are going to desert me. No, 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 not us, not me, not me, not me, not me. Is it I, Lord? Judas asked. It is you. Go and do what you're going to do. They're brought back to that intimate moment of hurt and pain, of sin, of brokenness. But that's the very place where God shows up. And this resurrected Jesus in his resurrection is the full visual for all who see him. And he comes across that he connects with on an intimate level, doing the basic everything things of life and converse, can having converse, conversation with someone that God shows sin, death does not have the final word. It is that that made their hearts burn. Indeed, our hearts burned within us as he spoke. I think this is a wonderful, wonderful picture for us, especially those of us who are scared when it comes to hearing the term evangelism. Those who are scared about not knowing all the answers to everything. First, just be with people. Listen to them. Listen to other people's story. I know that sounds simplistic and maybe even crazy that I'm saying it, but one of the most important things and the first things we learned when I was in seminary in our pastoral care class was we had to do verbatims. After a visit, we had to write down everything that was said and talk about it. Part of that was to help us that when someone's speaking to you, stop wheeling in your mind an answer to what they said. Just listen, first listen and pay attention that they will know that you listened and paid attention. That's what Jesus does. And he gives them the opportunity to speak. He asks them questions that they then get to share. He's not telling them everything right out the gate. Perfect gift, just treat people honestly like you care and listen, very simple. And then the next thing he does is he shares the story. He shares the story of Israel. He shares the story of God's people. And he brings it up to his story in the breaking of the bread. So they get to hear the story once again. Because sometimes we've heard things a few times, but oh, it finally clicks. And so in the breaking of the bread, I don't think this was necessarily a communion sharing moment of the sacrament. But what is the sacrament? It's the means of grace where God's forgiveness, life, and salvation are poured out. But is in that breaking, in that intimate, everyday, ordinary reality of the breaking of the bread that they are transported back, oh, to that first communion. That's what this is. That's what this means. That's what burned within their hearts. The fullness of life that Jesus had come to offer. There's your evangelism. Listen, first and foremost, care about people. Share your story. You may not have all the answers. I don't have all the answers. But share your story. And then trust that somewhere in that, the spirit may move and bread will be both broken and eyes will be opened and hearts will burn as people will experience, yes, the deep, deep love of God. Monday, Thursday, do what I've done as I have loved you. Now you go and love others. And it can be that simple. Amen.
united in the hope and joy of the resurrection. Let us pray for the church, for the world, and for all people according to their needs. Ever-present God, you make yourself known in the breaking of the bread and in the bonds of community. Reveal yourself to us in the faces of all we meet. Strengthened by your body and blood, let us boldly live out your good news. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. As we know you in the breaking of the bread, we know you in the grains of the field and the flowing waters. Care for the earth that you have lovingly created. Strengthen those who safeguard threaten land and water. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. You are the authority to whom we dedicate our lives. Help us keep the needs of the most vulnerable at the forefront of our community. Move us to care for any who are disregarded or oppressed. Mother in God, you feed and comfort those who hunger. Open the hearts of those who hoard resources and lead them to share your abundance. We especially pray for anyone hungering for your comforting presence on this day, be it physical, spiritual, mentally, or otherwise. We especially remember before you Caden McQuery, Amy, Pam, John, Stacy and Johnny and family, Jay and Karen. We pray for Terry, Irma, Tracy, Shannon, Jessica, Linda, Carl, Greg and Kim, Jeanette, Karen, Kelly, Inez, Joel, Pat, Ron, and Dick and Patty. Be with Jay Corey as she goes in for surgery. We also pray for Evan Vogue and family as they gathered on Saturday and placed Joan into your eternal care. Hold them in your arms of mercy and strength and the promise of the resurrection through Christ. We also pray for the family of Pastor Scott's friend Ron, for Catherine and Maddie, as they grieve Ron's death this past week. Again, hold them in your arms of comfort, of strength, of mercy, and the promise of the resurrection through Christ. We remember those named in our bulletin, on our prayer chain, and those we name aloud or in the silence of our hearts at this time. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. You pour out your love on those who are oppressed, support and comfort anyone who is marginalized, and those whose stories are not believed. From this form this community to listen faithfully and speak honestly in our ministry together. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. Rejoicing in the victory of Christ's resurrection, we lift our prayers and praise to you, almighty and eternal God, through Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray. Merciful God, our ordinary gifts seem small for such a celebration, but you make of them an abundance, just as you do with our lives. Receive them with thanksgiving, which you have first given us, ourselves, our time, and our possession. All signs of your gracious love, through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, we pray. Amen.
Jesus from the dead, raise you to new life, fill you with hope, and turn your mourning into dancing. And may Almighty God bless you and keep you. May God's face shine on you and be gracious to you. May God look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Go in peace, serve the risen one. Thanks be to God. Greetings for our announcements in the small sanctuary this week. Um, first announcement, if you weren't aware and maybe you're watching this at a time, you can still, still come. Um, if you're able to, today we have the service for Joan Vogue. Um, memorial service at 2 o'clock here in the small sanctuary at CLC, so Sunday um, here at CLC at 2 o'clock today, the 23rd. Just looking at my watch, 20, 23rd. Um, so if you can come be a part of that, your, your presence and support is appreciated. Our Benevolence of the Month is Stanwood Communal Resource Center. Again, they help out with a, a lot of areas in the community when folks are, can't pay a rent bill, electric bill, gas bill, things like that, as well as other programs, especially around kids and helping families and kids in the community. So if that's something you'd like to give a little extra to, you can do that by donating online, push the donate button. Um, if you send a check, just put down in the memo, uh, BOM, for Benevolence of the Month, um, Stanwood Camino Resource Center, so SCRC, um, and we'll make sure that that, that, that gets there. Uh, new member class, uh, new members are gathering together uh, on Sunday morning. We're going to go over the service, and then here in a couple weeks, we're going to be welcoming our new members in here at Camino Lutheran Church. Next, the following weekend, I'm going to be at a wedding back in Chicago um, for a friend, uh, and I'll be back at that wedding. So I won't be here for adult ed, so we're going to hold off on adult ed. Um, so new members this Sunday, and then no adult ed the following Sunday, and then we'll pick it up again and get started here as we finish out the spring heading on into to summer. So just wanted to give you a heads up on that. And then some people things. Uh, Pam Larson had her surgery and things went well. Uh, please keep Jay Corey in your prayer. She's going to be heading in for her surgery here in the, on the 26th. So please keep her in your prayers. And then um, as well, I would ask your prayers for, uh, for my friend Ron's family. Um, some of you have heard uh, my buddy that from seminary, we get together. He's part of the group from the Midwest we get together with every year in Iowa. He died this past Monday from heart issues that he'd been battling. So please keep his wife, Catherine, and their daughter, Maddie, and um, his family in your prayers um, for strength, for peace, that God's arms of mercies would wrap around them. And of course, as always, the promise of the resurrection um, can hold true for them. So. Those are all of our announcements for this week. God's peace and blessings as you continue your journey through this 50-day season in the church year we call Easter and celebrate the resurrection of Christ. Go in peace, serve the risen one. Thanks be to God. God's peace and blessings, everyone.